For some odd reason, uh, I'm a bit of a sucker for relay modules. I suppose it's the industrialish background, the electronic control systems controlling, you know, heavier loads. And uh, these are all, these basically have come to be because of the Arduino system. And uh, the one we're going to be looking at has got infrared remote control in it as well. So it doesn't need, you, you don't have to use these with Arduinos. You can use them with other control systems. Um, but basically speaking, you, you get two basic types. You get the one that control powers directly off the same 5 volt supply as your processor. And there's no opto-isolation in that. It is just purely intended for use with the same 5 volt supply. Now, I have to say, if you're running things like relays off an Arduino or other processor, it's better to take the you, the 5 volt and, if necessary, the negative all the way back to the uh, power supply in these because you don't want to loop out of your processor and provide the 5 volt to this because when the relays come in, particularly if a large clump of them come in at once, it creates a sudden current spike with the inductive coils in these and it can actually crash your processor. So you're better actually uh, maybe adding a bit of extra filtering locally or just running the cables directly back to the power supply that's feeding both items rather than just looping from one to the other. The other option here is opto-isolated units and these have the little opto-isolator in them and an option with this link to power it directly from the same 5 volt supply as your processor or an external 5 volt supply as long as the negative is uh, commoned. And uh, some of these they've taken modest precautions. Uh, they've, they're modest, you know, separation. For instance, you've got the anti-tracking slots around the relay terminals, uh, mainly between the uh, common and the low voltage end of the relay. Um, and a modest amount of spacing, not super spacing, but really not bad at all. Uh, this one doesn't uh, have any anything like that. I'd only use this with low voltage. However, this is the one we're interested in. This one doesn't really have the anti tracking either, which is a shame. But it's got modest, you know, spa spacing and separation, so it's not too bad. Um, it has this little extra module tucked in the end. And hold on, where's the power supply? And when I got this, I thought, oh, that's quite neat. Let's try the remote control out. So there's the 12 volts. Uh, well, there's the 12 volts now, he said, turning it on. And a little LED powers up on the infrared receiver and a little LED on the board. And then I tried the remote control and absolutely nothing happened. And then I thought, oh, right, what's happening here? Is it, have I, are these links supposed to different tried the links in different positions? Not much data. Um... And I tried the remote control and nothing was happening. I thought, let's narrow this down. Let's see if the remote control is transmitting data. And an easy way to do that is usually you can just get your mobile phone, you can turn it on to camera, you can point at the infrared LED. Um, I, sometimes you can even see the dull glow of the infrared LED, but the camera often sees the... It just touches into the infrared spectrum and you can actually see a purpley glow on the camera when you look at the uh, infrared LED and it's flashing and nothing was happening. So I sort of opened it up and these things are all very standard. Uh, they're actually supposed to be screwed. I've just pulled that out with excessive force. That's okay. It doesn't work anyway. Um, and at this point you'll see there are wires patched across it. Well, uh, did I, how many did I put in? I put one and two in maybe. And then I just thought, oh, I'm just, you know, barking up the wrong tree here because th there's other options. But basically speaking, uh, the keypad sticks in the front, it's just self-adhesive, it sticks onto the circuit board. And the keypad itself has these little conductive uh, printed discs in it that match with the sort of conductive coated tracks in here. Uh, conductive coated, I, I would say, I think the metal tracks underneath, with the, but they've got a coating on them, a sort of graphite type coating, grey coating, uh, possibly to stop them tarnishing. But when you press the button, it basically shorts these out. And I was, it wasn't obvious that there was a big crack in it. It is when you realise there's a crack. And I was just probing about and I said, as the you know simple thing is that it's one of these blob chips, so not really much you can do about that. So I thought, well, let's just check obvious things like the connection, follow the track through and then check it for continuity. And I did with the meter. And there was no continuity. And I thought, oh, right, OK, that track's somehow broken. And I, I fixed it. And then I thought, oh, and the, not, it started working and not all the buttons were working. Looking closer at it and then it really came obvious. There's a huge crack in this. It's obviously been squished at some point in the transit and it's broken. It's broken lots of tracks. So I just thought, well, yeah, 
you know what? There are other options here because this is a very, very standard remote control. It's notable it has seems to have all these features like uh, fast forward, rewind, um, and you know bulk number selection, channel up, channel down. It's a generic infrared remote control that's used so many other things, and it just so happened. I did have another in exactly the same format with roughly the same sort of layout. And um, the, let's see, what was I going to say? Uh, yeah, the battery contact is notable. It's the little drawer that slides out. And when you slide it in with a standard lithium cell in it, the lithium cell, the negative, makes contact with this springy contact at the bottom. The positive just pushes against that spring there. That's how it makes a connection. It just pushes that spring back. Uh, so if you ever have problems with these, try popping the battery in there a couple of times. Uh, it can solve them. But anyway, that's dead. And we've got this. And this came with a generic car type module that does you can plug the nice thing about these little modules you can buy on ebay for like three or four quid they're designed for adding to old car stereos and stuff like that and the nice thing about them is that if you plug a memory card in or a usb stick whatever mode they were in last they'll remember it and if you just plug a memory stick into this and supply it with 12 volts and it's got the audio sort of line level out it will just munch through the audio files on your memory card. So if you load the memory card up with just music, uh, it will just keep playing it in a loop continually. It will just keep going through that. Uh, and if you want it as a sort of background effects on, say, an arcade game, then you can uh, create a sort of string of files, and you can tell it just to repeat play the string of files, and you can... to make a big pause of silence between, say, for instance, audio samples like, you know, um, you know, the sort of things that would encourage people like, you know, the arcade games you'd get. Hey, folks, it's the number one game sensation, or it's an easy game, anyone can play, and MD can win. You know, the sort of jingles. Uh, it, you can also get, you can get the silent MP3s, basically an MP3 that lasts for a minute, and it's just silence. And if you string, if you find the numeric sequence that this thing is munching through them, the files in, you can intersperse. You can have like an audio. You can have an audio jingle. Then you could have a, a, a thirty second silence. Then a musical burst, and then a 30, 30, 30 second silence. You can just basically create a sort of a USB memory stick with all these samples in it, and this thing will just munch through it. But it comes with this remote control. There's no choice. It comes with remote control and all these extra features just because that's what they all come with. And the remote control, it turns out, does control this relay unit. But um, it's uh, it's got... If you use the keys in the sequence of uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, it will control the relays in that order. And if you press 0, it just kills them all. 9 was supposed to... It, it doesn't tally up the instructions, not even if you look at the original keypad. Either 0 or 9 was supposed to bring them all on, and it doesn't. But if you go, if you turn on 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and you press 9, it resets them all. If you actually put any 6 on, when there's 6 on, and you press 9, it turns all the remaining ones on, and 0 turns them all off. It's all strange. And it's, it's almost as if it's designed to not let them all turn on at once because it was causing problems. Very odd. You can also control this if you uh, leave these links in their current position, then the inputs referenced to negative will turn it on uh, if they're turned positive. However, if you actually reference, if you move these links across, it changes the polarity that turns it on. And if you've got something referenced positive and you just pull these uh, down uh, is it? Let, I'm trying to remember if it's uh, if it was pulling it down negative with respect to positive. Again, there's no data. I was just playing around with this. Uh, let, let's just do that right now. Let's actually use my meter as a shunt. Let's turn it round down to DC amps. No, let's actually. I know. I know this was. I was trying playing with this earlier. So let's turn it round to milliamps. And say, for instance, uh, we'll leave this in its original position. And the at this point the Remote control still has, say, control of channel 1. But I can also control channel 1 by going uh, from positive 
to there, I can turn it on. By, so by turning it positive with respect to negative, I'm guessing that uh, even just sort of 5 volts would probably do that. And the current, it takes about 10 milliamps. I get the feeling it's possibly fighting with something else to, to be drawing that current, unless it's only designed for 5 volts. Uh, no other power supply here to try that with. Oh, you know what? Let's uh, try. What can I do here? I can get a lithium button cell with a couple of wires. And we'll see if it runs off. If we can, I can trigger that with just a, a lower voltage. So I'm going to grab some wire here. <coughs> Let's grab a bit of solid wire. I don't get why it does the the strange thing with the remote control not turn the instructions that sort of the half-assed instructions that you get off the eBay listings kind of imply that you know nine should turn all the relays on in a one but it just doesn't the other buttons do nothing they're just it it is a generic remote control it's you know it says the instructions that the, only the numerical keys work and that's it so let's um use this button cell let's just hold the wires on I'm not sure what sort of voltage this is putting out. And with respect to negative, let's try... Yeah, uh, 3 volts is bringing that in as well. So quite a low voltage will actually trigger that. But if you swap the link across, and this is where I can just uh, bridge it out, uh, just pulling those inputs down to negative Oh, of course, you've got to actually set the link for each channel you're going to do it with. Uh, just pulling it down to negative, grounding that input, there's virtually no current flows, uh, will turn those on. And there's a strange little chip. It's a six-pin chip, and I thought, is that... Are they using some tiny little surface mount optized later? But it appears to be a chip that's designed for allowing... I, I don't know what it is. The, the numbers on it are just 46. 46 and then at a completely different angle is two dots and C. I don't know what that is. Uh, I don't know if it's a some sort of like multiple polarity logic input gate driver. Uh, there's no other transistor. That little tiny six pin chip is driving the relay. The only other thing that's down there is uh, some sort of, a, a current limiting resistor to that, possibly to uh, allow the use of the external input as well as the remote control. <laughs> And then there's an LED and resistor, and then just the classic diode across the coil of the, the relay. So um, it's a useful little module, uh, even without any other external stuff, the fact you can then control it. And I have to remember that if you put the links uh, into the other position, it stops the remote control working. So you have to have the links to the left-hand side, and then uh, you can then take control of all the relays. But as I say, it doesn't seem to matter... It, zero does clear them all, but it doesn't seem to matter which sequence you've got. If you've got just like five lit and when you press nine, it just clears them all. If you've got uh, six random ones uh, on, then nine then just turns all the rest on, he said, and lying and it all just randomly turned off. Yeah, it turns them on. Yeah, it's weird. I'm not sure. The chip here has the number scrubbed off. That doesn't help at all. It's not a... It looks like a little microcontroller because you can see this small programming uh, port next to it. And uh, the circuitry in this uh, is a little voltage regulator. It's an LM317. Um, and not much else. Uh, plenty of polarity protection diodes, which is good. Um, but yeah, it's, it's an interesting little device. It's quite useful. Just as a remote control relay system... Um, but yeah, interesting stuff.